Hey everybody, Hunter Fisher, Trapper, Trader, Guide, Scout, and Interpreter, and just a country cook, Steve Hall, here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with Pretty Miss Sheila running that camera. Hi, Sheila. Hi. She said hi. She's back from her mom's doing all that shopping. Welcome back, Sheila. Thank you. I missed you because I know I'm always goofing up a camera shot or I need help. She's back here, and let's get started on some bruschetta with toasted French bread. Come on over and let's get started on this recipe. Thank you, Sheila. Welcome home. I think the best tomatoes for this is Roma tomatoes because they don't have a lot of seeds and juice in them. And I, this is my little, I think it's a cheese knife, but I love this thing. And see, the inside of these is nice and solid. They don't have that much. Now, I'm going to cut this in little quarter-inch cubes. Now, you got to kind of split the difference. If you get them real fine, it's almost like salsa. You don't want that. And I don't like big chunks on that bread. So I'm going to cut it in about nice little quarter-inch chunks. And see how firm those Roma tomatoes are to cut as opposed to a conventional round one, you know? I make about two cuts lengthwise to get that quarter inch size and then just zing them this way after I knock the top off of it. Right here. Let me do another one. And I, I get these little smaller ones. Now you're going to need about eight to ten Roma tomatoes to make this recipe depending upon how big they are and I pick little ones. I pick these little ones because they seem to be redder, firmer and that works out to be about nine so that's what I got today. Well I switch knives and I cut these in half and like I said I make two long little strips there. He snuck out of the middle but he's not getting away because I'm going to get these in quarter inch pieces. Just like so. Then what I'm going to do is cut the rest of these up, get them in this bowl, and we'll continue the recipe. All right, we got them all chopped up. We'll put them in our little mixing bowl here. And you notice, out of nine Roma tomatoes, look at hardly any seeds and juice. That's what makes it really nice for this particular recipe. Now in here, we're going to put a half a cup of basil. Start to stir. Boy, that smells so good. Look at the color. Isn't that beautiful? It is. Let me get a couple other ingredients. All right. You notice that my cutting board magically appeared. I love this cutting board because Sheila bought this for me as a gift about a hundred recipes ago. So we stopped the camera, I washed the tomato juice off there and put my bowl back on top because I just don't feel right unless I'm working on my little board here. Now, we're also going to add, and remember, all these ingredients will be in the description box right below the video. You never have to go to a website to get our recipes. They'll be right there for you. We're going to put in about a teaspoon of oregano in there. And we're going to put in between one and two tablespoons of minced garlic. Now, this is up to your taste, so that's why I say between one and two, and that's what it's going to say in the description box, between one or two tablespoons of minced garlic. Get that happening in there. Boy, that smells so good. Wow, we can't wait to get the bread done, and I got a little trick I'm going to try for that. Get this stirred in. Now we're going to add a tablespoon of lemon juice in here. Now you can back it down to a teaspoon if you want. That's totally up to you. And then we're going to put in about a quarter of a cup of olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil. Now I got a third of a cup in here because this is the recipe that my buddy gave me, but I'm only putting in about a quarter of a cup because I don't want it so messy that you can't do nothing with it. But that really looks good in there. Well, all right. While the camera was off, I cut up two more tomatoes and put in there, because I should have picked maybe a little bit bigger tomatoes, and I wanted this consistency, which is just perfect now. So I threw a couple more in there. So I'd say ten medium-sized ones, which I'll put down there. And just a little bit of pepper. 
on here. A little bit more. You know how I love pepper. Just a smidgen of salt. Don't need much. And kind of tumble it. All right. Now we got this. We're going to put this in the refrigerator and let it sit in there for a while and kind of chill down while we get our bread ready. All right. Now it's time to make our bread. Now I bought this French bread at the store. Hope you got that on a wide shot because this thing's about three feet long. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut this at a real steep angle. Maybe we might want to use about this much here. If you cut it like this, you only get little round pieces of bread. And I like it a little thicker than a quarter inch so that it don't get real soggy. And again, you want to do it at an angle because now you get a nice big piece to put all your tomatoes on. All right. You know, in most of these bruschetta recipes that you see, they have you put these in the broiler. And they have you put olive oil on here, then take a piece of garlic and rub each one of these with garlic to be real traditional. So I thought, I'm going to try something different. I went and melted four tablespoons of butter and the equal amount of olive oil I poured in later in this little bowl right here. So this has four tablespoons of butter and four tablespoons of olive oil. And I'm not rubbing all these little things down with garlic. So I went and bought some garlic, fresh garlic paste, gourmet garlic paste from up at Kroger's. It's even ground finer than minced garlic. And I'm going to put about Oh, a little over a teaspoon, closer to a tablespoon in there. Watch this. This is just, I dreamt about this the other night and I thought, how do you get that garlic flavor and that olive oil on there? And some people even use butter and do it. And you can do it on a pan or in the broiler if you want. But I'm going to mix this up real good here. Let me turn my griddle back on. And I just got my electric griddle out. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to paint these little babies. There we go. Both sides. Doesn't that look good, Sheila? Good. And I'm going to put those right on the griddle. And then I'm going to grill both sides of them. It looks fast, too. It, it is fast. Yeah, you don't have to sit there and rub it with a little piece of garlic. I know that's the traditional way, but I'm sorry. You know me when it comes to changing recipes midstream. Boy, that even smells good. That works. That's equal parts butter and olive oil and some of that garlic paste down in there. I thought I wasn't going to need that much, but it looks like it's soaking it up pretty good. Obviously, you can make more for however much bread you got. But I'm just going to load a few of these pieces up, and I might take the rest of this bread for like some small little sandwiches or to have with some soup. So I'm only going to put nine of them on here so they'll fill up the griddle real nice for the recipe. And that worked out about right. Perfect. There we go. All right, let's move our little griddle front and center and get these going. Would you look at my little garlic toast pieces over here. He's not quite ready to turn. I think you can kind of push down on him too to make it grill in the middle. That looks just nice. Might even reduce my heat just a little bit. Ooh, that one looks perfect. He looks pretty good. He looks pretty good. Now here's the thing is, some people use that real hard shelled French bread, like a crispy crunchy French bread. I don't like that because it's. I, I don't like croutons on my salad. She'll tell you that. I despise them because I don't like eating little boulders when I'm going to have a salad. And when you bite into these, it should be crispy on the outside, almost like a crisp, you know, fried hamburger bun or whatever, but not saw your gums in half when you bite down on your bruschetta. So this side needs to be a little more. Check these out. They're getting really good. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to line this little platter over here with some paper towels. 
so these don't get soggy when they cool. Well, that's nice. That's really, that one's ready. He is too. As these cool off, they're going to crisp up just a little bit, but again, I want them soft. Beautiful. Perfect. That one little guy, there's always one. I'll throw the heat to him. That one's done. Let's get these last two browned up just nice here before we turn off our little griddle. It's kind of funny because as I took these off the grill, Sheila says, you know, you could eat that bread by itself. It's so delicious looking. And you could eat this by itself. But I think we need to combine the two of these. And if you're going to serve this to guests, I wouldn't plate this up like this until you're ready to, to actually serve it so it don't soak the, the bread up. But that's got a, and I, don't, I don't know if you can hear that, it's got a nice little crunchy edge to the outside. We didn't have to heat up the whole stove, the whole broiler and everything in the kitchen. We just did it. You can do it in a frying pan, I think. We didn't have to sit there and rub the stupid little garlic chunk on every one of our bruschetta pieces because we just mixed in our little minced garlic. It's even more, it's a, a garlic paste in with our oil. And let me go ahead and plate these up here. Boy, that looks so good. We probably got a couple of cups left over here on the side, but we wanted to pour some in a little dish and surround it with all these so you would go, ah, don't that look absolutely delicious? Man, bruschetta, and no more heating up the stove, no more grinding that garlic on top of there. I don't know where people come up with some of that stuff, but I just wanted to do it different, so it turned out great. Well, there you have it, delicious, quick and easy bruschetta. And there's a guy that's always bugging me saying, man, when you get all done, you need to take a bite. So I'm not going to argue with him on this one. This looks delicious. Oh. That bread is perfect. I hate it when the edges of the bread from that real hard stuff gnaws into your gums and stuff. This is absolutely soft, but it's still crunchy. All the ingredients are outstanding. I'm going to take another bite, all right. As soon as you turn that camera off, I'm going to eat about two or three of these. So I'm telling you what, try this recipe. I think you're really going to like it. But most of all, Sheila's back home running the camera. Thank you, Sheila. Great job today. Oh, thank you. I really missed you. But hey, we really hope you subscribe to our channel. It's pretty easy. little shotgun red space will pop up over here in just a little bit. If you click on that, it'll say subscribe. Then next to that, click on that bell put them little lines alongside of the bell. That way you'll be notified every time we come out with a new recipe. In fact, we're going to put one up over here that you might click on and enjoy as well. Is this the best little on the griddle, paint them with our own little sauce, quick fried both sides and all the stuff, bruschetta that you ever ate? If it ain't, it ought to be. This is Steve in Nashville, Tennessee, along with pretty Miss Sheila home. Oh man, it's great to have you home saying we'll see you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. Bye bye for now. I got to have one more bite or two more bites. Turn that off and come over here.